Fast, frantic, but perfectly practical, the Audi RS4 remains the market's definitive mid-sized high-performance estate. In this B9 series, guys, this Ferrari for families swaps its old V8 for a 2.9-litre V6 and an even more sophisticated Quattro four-wheel drive system that sets this model apart in its unique little niche. As before, it can hit 174 miles an hour on the Nürburgring, but is just as happy collecting your dry cleaning. You only truly get a sense of just how fast it is by following behind in something else. At which point, whatever that might be, it'll be hard not to wish you were in an RS4. This car, you see, is one of a kind. Every once in a while, a car's developed that's so good and such a class benchmark that other manufacturers are very wary about taking it on. The Range Rover, for example, uh, maybe even the Mazda MX-5. Audi makes such a car too, and it's this one, the RS4 Avant. And we're gonna test the fastest version yet, this B9 series model that was launched at the end of 2017. Now, if you want a very, very fast four-wheel drive mid-sized estate with supercar performance, there's really no precisely comparable rival to this model. The work of Audi Sport, uh, the English Stat brand's Go Faster arm, the genes of this particular car can be traced right back to that performance division's very first product, the RS2 estate that was co-developed with Porsche back in 1994. It paved the way for the first generation in the RS4 line, the 2.7-litre twin-turbo V6 model of 2000. It was ferociously quick, but ultimately rather unsatisfying in the way that very fast Audis used to be. But they aren't anymore. The second generation B7 series RS4 of 2006, this car was a turning point in that regard and it proved to be a landmark contender for the brand. A machine satisfying enough at last to properly challenge the all-conquering BMW M3. It made good use of the charismatic 4.2-litre V8 that was first used in Audi's R8 supercar, as did the replacement B8 Series RS4 model of 2012. For this fourth-generation B9 Series model, though, that classic power plant has made way for a smaller but punchier 2.9-litre twin-turbo V6 that manages to be 25% more efficient, but every bit as quick. Like that original RS2 model, this one has been co-developed with Porsche. The 450 PS power output might be the same as the previous B8 series design, but there's masses more pulling power through the ratios of this replacement model's now much more responsive auto transmission, an eight-speed Tiptronic paddle shift setup. In addition, Audi's traditional advantage over similarly performing mid-size models like the Mercedes-AMG C63 and the BMW M3, uh, the Quattro four-wheel drive system has been retained and improved and there's an all new stiffer lighter MLB platform plus a standard rear sport differential to further help get the torque to the tarmac through those turns. That sounds promising doesn't it? Let's put this car to the test. Not a lot prepares you for just how quick this car really is. Certainly not the initial experience of getting in and firing the thing up. Now your perspective here will depend a great deal on whether you come to this car with a fresh perspective on Audi RS products or whether you're one of those people who harbour fond memories of the old 4.2 litre V8 which has sustained this Ingolstadt sub-brand for most of the last couple of decades. Now with that unit fitted to the previous B8 series version of this car, uh, the oral fireworks dealer on a starter were really pretty memorable. This B9 series model by turbo 2.9 litre V6. Also springs into life with a purposeful flare of revs, but the melody is inevitably less addictive, although it can be improved if, as here, your car's been optioned up with the extra cost RS Sport exhaust. At least on the move, there's absolutely no doubting that the engine switch has delivered significantly more speed this time around. 
forget the fact that the 450 PS total power output is pretty much the same as that delivered by the old V8. The stat that really matters here is that of pulling power. Those twin turbos deliver far more of it. To be specific, the torque figure rises by 170 newton meters to 600 newton meters, and that equates to an astonishing 44% power to weight ratio improvement. The result is a very different kind of car to the next model down in the A4 performance hierarchy, the 354 PS 3 liter twin turbo S4. The S4 feels like what it is, uh, merely a very, very rapid A4. In uh, contrast with an RS4, the feeling you get is very much that of a bona fide junior supercar. To be specific, rest to 62 miles an hour here occupies just 4.1 seconds. Uh, that's 0.6 of a second quicker than the previous generation model, and it's also a fraction quicker than you'll go in this model's closest rival, uh, the Mercedes AMG C63 Estate. Just as well, then, that the brakes are devastatingly effective. Well, they are in our view, anyway. I mean, if you're going to disagree with that, then Audi will sell you a set of frighteningly expensive ceramic discs. Although, if you're driving fast enough to properly exercise those on the public highway then well you might as well stop by your local constabulary on the way home and just give yourself up. As usual with fast Audis the maximum speed is rather pointlessly capped at 155 miles an hour although in this case you can pay English that an obscene amount of money to get that restrictor lifted in which case your RS4 will top out at 174 miles an hour. In normal point-to-point -point motoring torque builds from under 2000 rpm and from then on, providing you have a straightaway long enough, uh, the sensation of power is akin to that of being in a 747 firing down the runway at Heathrow. As at startup, the creamy, rather digitalized engine soundtrack that you get as the revs rise isn't a match for that of the old V8. I mean, it was cool to be able to thrash your way up to over 8,000 revs with that old engine, but with this replacement unit, although it is a little more synthesized, it does still have a bit of theatrical fizz. Yes, it does lack the furious top end of a BMW M car or the dramatic thunder of an AMG V8, but after a while, you're really rather warm to the way that this Porsche-developed power plant snarls purposefully on upshifts and lets out little pops and bangs as you snick the steering wheel paddle shifters down through those closely stacked ratios. There's also a bit of visual fun to be had storming through the gears if, as part of the RS-specific menu in this virtual cockpit display, you select the large central rev counter that dominates the view and which changes colour from uh, green to orange to red as the needle flicks up towards the rev limit. It's also hard not to be impressed by the way that this RS4 tackles the turns this time around. Part of that is down to the redeveloped Quattro system, which usually directs 60% of torque to the back wheels, but if conditions demand, can send up to 85% of power to the back, or if necessary, as much as 70% to the front. Now, this setup's been designed to work with a torque vectoring system, uh, which applies minimal brake interventions to the wheels on the inside of any given curve before they start to spin, thus uh, maximizing traction and making handling more precise, agile and stable. Now true, the whole package isn't necessarily what you want if you were tire smoking on an airfield, but it's absolutely what you need in the far more likely scenario of wanting an astonishingly rapid point-to-point -point performance car for super quick progress on secondary roads in poor conditions. Also playing its part here is the standard fit sport differential, which at uh, speed through tight corners can constantly vary the amount of torque which is distributed to each of the rear wheels. Now, rather than subtly braking an individual wheel to transfer traction to one with more grip in the way that an ordinary torque vectoring system would, uh, the sport differential instead sends additional wheel speed to each rear wheel in a way that, um, well, it pushes you around the corner. Now, the effect uh, is a smoother and quicker and less obtrusive way of exiting the bend. Our only reservation, really, is a problem that Audi's engineers have traditionally struggled with, and that's uh, that of steering feedback. That's an issue that affects this car just as much as it does the RS5 Coupe and Sportback models that share virtually all of this RS4's mechanical specification. Uh, when you're pressing on through corners at speed, uh, you simply don't feel as connected to what's going on beneath you as you would be at uh, the helm of the rival Mercedes-AMG C63. 
this makes quite a lot of difference to the sheer engagement factor that you'd maybe hope for from a high performance model like this. Without that extra nth of steering response, you're never really invited to push that little bit further. Or to put it another way, there's no sense of this wicked wagon questioning your willpower every time you get behind the wheel. Disappointingly, specifying the extra cost dynamic steering option doesn't really help in this regard either. Uh, this varies the rate at which the front wheels turn to suit different circumstances without necessarily telling you very much about what it's doing while it's doing it. Your Audi Centre salesperson will point out that one of the functions of the standard drive select driving dynamic system is to vary steering weight, but steering feel is very different from steering weight. Now Porsche knows this, and as the brand gets more involved in the development of future Audi RS models, you'll hope that things will change. Now we mentioned drive select, it's very much the same setup that you'll get in any ordinary A4 with selectable comfort, dynamic, auto and individual drive select modes. Uh, now these, as well as dealing with the steering, also tweak throttle response, uh, stability control thresholds and the impact of that sport differential system. Plus, of course, the drive select settings alter the responses of the transmission. Uh, that's an 8-speed Tiptronic paddle shift setup. And as ever on a sporting Audi, there's no manual gearbox option. This is a supposedly old tech torque converter self-shifting setup, but it doesn't feel old tech to use, being in our experience one of the fastest reacting automatics out there. Uh, the computer software throws in a lovely exhaust cackle on full throttle upshifts, while downshifts are aggressive when you're in dynamic mode, but they're seamlessly smooth otherwise. The other thing that the drive select modes can influence is ride quality, but only if, rather annoyingly, you spend extra on the DRC, a dynamic ride control system. A really well-tuned suspension system doesn't necessarily need adaptive damping, and at first glance you'd think that this Audi setup ought to fall into that category. Uh, it's a sophisticated five-link arrangement on the front and rear axles that precisely separates longitudinal and transverse forces. And it's a bit like the setup that you get in the top McLarens. In the case of this RS4 though, it's uh, been hobbled by the non-negotiable fitment of lowered RS Sport suspension, and that drops the car by seven millimeters and robs it of a crucial degree of wheel travel, especially at the front. That means that a standard RS4 will crash through potholes and over speed humps that even a performance oriented family model ought really to deal with in its stride. Now things are slightly better with the DRC adaptive damping fitted and the drive select system set to comfort, but it's a bit irritating to have to keep doing that when ideally you just want to leave the car in the dynamic mode that gives you a few more of the engine's aural fireworks. Ultimately though, what it all boils down to is if you specify the car correctly and then choose the right settings once you have, this RS4 will grip like you wouldn't believe and it'll just demolish any twisting secondary road supercar style in just about any weather. And when you don't need it to do that, it'll comfortably cruise, commute and undertake just about any practical task that you might like to throw at it. No wonder it's in a class of one. The exterior design of the RS4 has always been about blending just the right amount of discretion and purpose. It's the sort of car that gets a lot of appreciation from those who know what it is, but it's low key enough to pass unnoticed most of the time. Under the skin is Audi's MLB platform, and that's the same one that underpins the RS5 coupe and sportback models that share this car's 2.9 litre V6 TFSI twin turbo engine. Now, appropriately, aesthetic inspiration came from a competition model, Audi's 90 Quattro IMSA GTO racer, hence the blistered wheel arches, the lacerated air intakes and the huge oval exhaust pipes. Now this car sits 30 millimeters lower than a standard A4 Avant and it's 56 mils longer and 24 millimeters wider. Time to get up close and personal here at the front where the look is far more distinct from humbler A4 Avant models than is the case with the S4. Now the main difference lies with this black 
honeycomb grille which lacks the bright aluminium crossbars that feature on the other A4 variants uh, and it gets quattro lettering along its lower edge. Uh, these lower corner air intakes also get a meaner look thanks to a reduction in chrome adornment. And further up uh, there are full LED headlamps that can optionally feature the intelligent matrix technology that we have here and which either way have these extra lateral air inlets that make the car look wider and more aggressive. Move to the side and the most obvious point of RS4 differentiation lies with quattro blisters on the flanks that emphasise wheel arches widened by 30 millimetres to accommodate the huge alloys. Uh, 19 inches are supplied as standard wearing 275 stroke 30 Continental rubber front and rear but most owners are likely to want to trade up to these bigger 20 inch 5 twin spoke edge design rims. They're here embellished with optional red brake calipers. Uh, the top carbon edition version gets a new new form of milled twin inch wheel and that name references milled slots inserted into the side of the spokes as part of a process that was previously used only on exclusive supercars and motorsport models. Now there it saves eight kilos of wheel weight. Uh, the side slit extensions are also wider than they would be on an S4 and they feature these black inserts and these smart aluminium roof rails finish the profile perspective off nicely. At the rear, the subtle silvered lower diffuser you get on the S4 is replaced by this far more overt RS panel and that features uh, at either corner those huge oval tailpipes mentioned earlier. Also unique are these vertical air inlets on the outer edges of the LED rear lamp clusters and these feature scrolling indicators and a multifaceted 3D design that uses no fewer than 48 LEDs to create a really distinctive nighttime signature. Uh, this neat rooftop spoiler rounds things off. Time to take a seat in the front. Where you'll find yourself in a cabin that we think will really sell you this car. It incorporates plenty of elements designed to set this RS4 model apart from humbler A4 variants. Uh, this flat-bottomed RS Sports leather steering wheel is of course bespoke, uh, so the same steel pedals, and you get these lovely Nappa leather trimmed, honeycomb stitched uh, winged RS Super Sport seats. Uh, otherwise, apart from the leather fashioned door armrests and the uh, knee pads here, the ambiance is exactly as it would be in any plushly specified A4 model. So an almost unbroken line of air vents stretch from one side of the fascia to the other, sitting above a 3D trim inlay panel that comes as standard with a brushed aluminium race finish, or which can be optionally ordered in uh, piano black, anthracite or carbon fibre. To your left, the centre console area has been visually separated away to give the upper area of the dash more of a floating feel, and small details add to the feeling of quality, like the RS-specific gear lever that also acts as a hand rest for the infotainment system controller. Uh, it would have been good if the gear change paddles had also been specified as uh, RS bespoke. As it is, they're plastic items and they feel inappropriate for such an exclusive performance model. Other features from the uh, A4 parts bin are more welcome though, uh, like the touch switches for the three zone climate control and the way that the temperature displays have been incorporated into the uh, ventilation system's rotary dials. In fact, wherever you look, touch or feel, there are treats, uh, buttons click nicely, uh, the column stalks feel good, and the low rent plastics that you'd find further down in some premium rivals are notable by their absence. Uh, we really like the seats. They're anatomically shaped and electrically adjustable, plus they incorporate a standard massage function, and they're perfectly positioned in front of the wheel uh, through which you view the all-digital Audi virtual cockpit. Now, if you don't want to grab uh, then you could criticise some aspects of storage space provision. After all, the glove box is small and not lockable as standard. Uh, the door bins are slim. There's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses. And these twin cup holders just ahead of the rotary MMI controller should be covered by a sliding lid. On the plus side, though, you do get a useful bin beneath this smart ratcheting central armrest. And that's complete with USB, aux in and 12-volt ports. Plus, you can also have this optional wireless charge mat fitted here. Uh, there are more connectivity ports on the ledge near the starter button, plus there's a coin tray here by the gear stick and there's a compartment down by the driver's right knee. 
Now, you might be familiar with this Audi virtual cockpit setup from some of the brand's other models. Here it's standard 12.3-inch uh, LCD color monitor, uh, which replaces the usual instrument binnacle dials with a layout which is fully digital and customizable using smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Uh, it can be viewed in three ways. The classic display will show the usual speedometer, uh, rev counter, and gear indicator readouts. Alternatively, this uh, progressive display reduces the size of those items and instead brings functions like uh, the navigation map or your media settings to the fore. RS4 buyers though also get a third RS display which prioritizes the rev counter and then you can uh, configure the other elements around it uh, like readouts for torque in newton meters, power in percent, um, temperature in degrees C, uh, also tire pressures and g-forces. Um, if the gearbox is in its manual mode, green, orange and red segments will be illuminated sequentially as the revs rise and just before the rev limiter cuts in, the entire scale will flash red. Now you might be seeing that a lot if you're on a track and you're using the provided lap timer. Um, lap times and shift light info can also feature on the optional head-up display. Anything the virtual cockpit setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the slimline MMI infotainment display that dominates the top of the dashboard. Now, appropriately, this flagship model includes Audi's top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package with its 8.3-inch monitor, and it features crisp 3D maps and responsive NVIDIA graphics. A bit disappointingly, it doesn't rise out of the fascia in the way the screen does on a cheaper Audi RS3, but in compensation, the thin tablet-style display is touch-sensitive with neat pinch and swipe functionality, and it comes presented in a classy silver-coloured magnesium frame. If you don't want to cover the thing with sticky fingerprints, there's voice activation, steering wheel buttons, and of course, the usual chrome-edged rotary controller in front of the gear stick, uh, which with this premium MMI package comes with a surface on which commands can be traced with your fingertips. The useful Audi smartphone interface is of course incorporated uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity and that allows everything that you access on your handset to be duplicated onto the dashboard screen. And the impressive Audi Connect system is also included via which you'll be able to use a whole raft of 4G online Wi-Fi options powered by a super fast LTE module and that'll give you download speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now this is where, theoretically, you ought to most notice the benefit of the extra 12 millimetres of wheelbase length that this fourth generation B9 series model enjoys over its predecessor. Audi says there's 23 millimetres more legroom back here than there was before, but to be frank, it really doesn't feel that much bigger. More of an issue is this prominent centre transmission tunnel. Still, three adults are very rarely carried at the back of this kind of car, and two will be as comfortable as it's possible to be in a mid-sized, high-performance model of this sort. Uh, rear central vents are provided, together with digital uh, climate controls and a 12-volt socket. Unless you pay extra for the optional stowage pack, though, you don't get seat back pockets or uh, these neat cup holders in the central armrest. Finally, let's take a look at the luggage area, and that's accessed, as you'd expect, by a powered tailgate. Now, it's one of those that can be specified to activate with a waft of your foot beneath the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with shopping. Uh, raising the hatch reveals that this B9 Series RS4 model's extra 26 millimetres of length has freed up 15 litres more boot space than before. Uh, the total now rises to a class-leading 505 litre figure. That's 15 litres more than you'll get in that rival Mercedes-AMG C63 estate. 
There are recessed floor rails and fold-out bag hooks on each side of the luggage area and that's illuminated by cool LED strip lights on the cargo bay sidewalls. Uh, that extra cost storage pack just mentioned also provides a few extra items here. Uh, there's a luggage net, there's side tensioning straps, uh, there are nets in the corner recess areas and there's a 12 volt socket. Uh, there's no additional carriage capacity beneath the boot floor but that's because rather refreshingly Audi provides you with a spare wheel. Uh, that's rather than one of those irritating tyre inflation kits. Uh, RS4 owners who uh, need more space will value the versatility of this 40-20-40 split folding rear backrest. Uh, the centre part of that is very useful if you need to carry longer items like skis. Um, now, flattening the seats will reveal up to 1510 litres of space. You'll need a £63,000 budget for this fourth generation RS4 model and for our market anyway, you have to have it in this Avant Estate form. Only the second generation B7 series RS4 was ever offered here with the alternative of a saloon body style. Now that might sound a little restrictive, but actually it isn't because uh, exactly the same mechanical package is available bearing an RS5 badge in coupe and sportback guises. Um, if it's an RS4 that you want, you'll choose between the standard model, and that's the one that we're trying here, and the more exclusive carbon edition trim level, which costs an extra £10,000. More on that, though, in a minute. Uh, the standard RS4 model's asking price certainly represents quite a step up from the figure that Ingolstadt asks for the lesser 354 PS S4 Avant model, which costs around £48,000. Is the £15,000 premium justified by this 450 PS contender's extra power and bespoke equipment package? Only you can decide. So, on to the RS4 value proposition in comparison to its rivals, or perhaps we should say to its rival. There really is only one competitor model offering a directly equivalent alternative in size, body style and power to what's on offer here, and that's the Mercedes-AMG C63 Estate. Even that car isn't quite the same because it can't be had in our market with four-wheel drive, and that's always been a key RS4 selling point. In all other respects, so the C63 is pretty comparable to this Audi. Now, yes, with the Merc, you get a 476 PS V8 rather than a 450 PS V6, but the performance stats are virtually the same, and the AMG model costs only £1,400 more. Uh, there aren't any other fast estate alternatives with this kind of power, but there are two other similarly performing mid-sized and practically shaped contenders that you might like to look at if you are prepared to consider a saloon body shape. Now, neither, though, is available with four-wheel drive, and that could be a deal-breaker. Uh, so, for about the same kind of money as Audi is asking here, uh, you can have Alfa Romeo's lovely Giulia Quadrifoglio with its Ferrari-derived 517 PS 2.9 litre V6, uh, the Alpha is a couple of tenths quicker to 62 miles an hour than an RS4, and its top speed isn't restricted. So on an autobahn or an airfield, you could theoretically keep going in a quadrifoglio until you reached 191 miles an hour. Uh, the opposite end of the manic character spectrum is BMW's M3 Saloon, which can be had with 450 PS if you order it in uprated competition pack form, although that will cost you nearly £65,000. Uh, the M3 doesn't have the pulling power of the Audi, though. If having considered all that, you conclude it is an RS4 that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been with this standard specification. So... Let's take a look at that now. Now, obviously, the paddle shift, eight-speed Titronic auto gearbox and the Quattro setup come as standard, uh, as do other mechanical fundamentals to the RS4 package. And they include firm, lowered RS sport suspension, an RS exhaust system, and an RS model-enhanced braking system with branded brake calipers. Uh, there is also an RS version of the brand's drive select vehicle dynamic system. And that allows you to tweak the throttle, the steering, and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. 
Also standard is a feature that S4 buyers have to pay extra for, the Quattro with Sport Differential Package that distributes variable amounts of driving force to each rear wheel, improving stability and agility when you take tight corners at speed. Uh, additionally, you get stainless steel pedals, acoustic glazing, an alarm, a powered tailgate and full LED headlights and taillights. Plus, of course, there are lots of subtle RS model styling features, uh, the radiator grille, the rear diffuser, user, uh, the rear spoiler, even the tailpipes and the wheel arches, all of these things, uh, like the 19-inch 10-spoke star alloy wheels, are RS4 specific. As of course is much of the interior trim. Uh, the embossed front RS Supersport seats, for example, which can be specified as standard in three ways. Now in this car, uh, the Nappa leather is lunar silver with rock gray stitching. We could also have had crescendo red stitching or have opted for the leather with a black finish. Uh, either way, these chairs come electrically powered and heated, plus they feature a pneumatic massage function. Uh, to complete the classy feel, there's an LED interior lighting pack along with aluminium race interior inlays plus uh, full leather trim for the door armrests and the knee pads. Uh, the gear lever is bespoke as is the three-spoke leather RS Sport steering wheel through which you view a set of all digital Audi virtual cockpit instrument dials uh, that here include an RS specific menu with a central rev counter, a power and torque display and a g-force indicator. Uh, also standard is top level media connectivity and that's courtesy of Audi's MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch setup. That works via an 8.3 inch centre dash screen and it includes integrated 3D navigation, a 10 gigabyte jukebox, DVD player and voice recognition. And you also get three years of access to the suite of Audi Connect infotainment services. Uh, Audi Connect is something that we really need to tell you a bit more about. It gives you an LTE data transmission module and that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates in this RS4 a Wi-Fi hotspot. Also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, uh, access the Google Points of Interest search function with voice control and use a web radio setup with uh, stations from all around the world. Uh, through that Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your uh, Facebook and your Twitter pages and it's also possible to read, write and send text messages and emails. Um, the included online media streaming package, that will give you access to millions of music tracks and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system. Now that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams, plus the setup can also deliver parking information and display details on parking lots and parking garages almost anywhere you're likely to go. Otherwise, it's all very much as it would be in any normal high-spec Audi A4 model, which means that, as with all A4s, you get features like uh, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors, three-zone climate control, uh, a keyless go push-button starter, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter, and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. Um, as you'd expect from this class of car, the uh, infotainment package integrates Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, access to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems, and a 10-speaker, 180-watt DAB Audi sound system. All of that controllable either via the MMI controller, by voice, through buttons on the multifunction leather stitch steering wheel or via that centre dash colour touchscreen. Enough on the standard RS4 specification, time to discuss what you can do to embellish it, as almost all owners will undoubtedly want to. In fact, uh, we'd go as far as saying that to preserve prime used values, there are a few key features that you probably really need to have. Um, in a few years' time, buyers on the second-hand market are quite possibly going to favour models that are fitted with optional features like the throatier, uprated RS Sport exhaust system and the larger 20 inch five twin spoke edge design forged alloy wheels. Uh, there's a choice of silver or anthracite black finishes. Uh, another optional feature fitted here that future buyers would probably also quite like to see is the clever RS matrix LED headlight system. Now these um, matrix headlights are a real nighttime talking point. Uh, they incorporate sensors and an inbuilt camera uh, that detects other road users as well as ambient light in built up areas. Uh, the beams then react by 
dipping individual LEDs to prevent dazzle while still fully illuminating the remainder of the road. Um, they can even draw from the vehicle's navigation data to anticipate corners and adjust LEDs as you negotiate the bend. If funds permit, a shortcut way of getting your RS4 supplied in a way that already includes those three key extra features is to go for the pricier carbon addition model that we mentioned at the beginning. Now with this more exclusive variant, the 20 inch wheel rims in question are of a five arm peak milled design and they feature red brake calipers. Uh, there's metallic paint and rear privacy glass. And in addition, as that model name suggests, you get plenty of carbon trim uh, with a carbon addition RS4 You'll find it on the front spoiler, around the door mirrors, on the radiator grille, it'll be on the side seat extensions and the rear diffuser. Plus there are carbon inlays in the cabin and you also get an evocative carbon engine cover. Whichever RS4 variant you decide on, we'd suggest that you keep some budget back for another key must-have feature, and that's adaptive damping. Now, that is something that really ought to be standard for this kind of money, and it's a setup that's virtually essential if you go for the larger 20-inch wheels, and you don't want to have to keep your chiropractor permanently on speed dial. Now, Audi calls uh, this car system RS Sport Suspension Plus with dynamic ride control. Now, we have that set up here, along with two other designs desirable interior extras that RS4 buyers might want to look at, a panoramic glass sunroof and a head-up display. Plus, the box has also been ticked for the speed restrictor limit to be lifted, and so maximum speed rises from 155 to 174 miles an hour. Uh, that little software tweak costs nearly £1,500. On to less significant extra stuff you could consider. Uh, it's worth thinking about the Comfort and Sound Pack. That gives you a high-end 19-speaker, 755-watt Bang & Olsen 3D sound system, a uh, rear-view camera, and advanced key keyless entry, which includes a rear sensor that allows you to open the boot with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. All three of those items can alternatively be ordered separately. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we wouldn't really want the dynamic steering option, which varies the steering ratio based on your speed and the drive select mode that you've chosen. Uh, in our experience, that package really doesn't succeed in offering the kind of feel and feedback that you really want. Um, other key options include the Audi phone box. Now that wirelessly charges your smartphone and improves its reception uh, via the roof antenna. If you want to keep on ticking boxes, uh, you could add in a heated steering wheel, side and rear privacy glass with front acoustic glazing, uh, heated rear seats, and an extended LED interior multicolored lighting pack. Plus, if you go for the power folding mirrors, you can additionally add in a useful memory function for the powered front seats. Track warriors with a bottomless budget may also like to look at the ceramic brakes too. Uh, they're priced at a cool 6,000 pounds. In terms of the aesthetics of your RS4, well, if budget allows, you can really go to town. Uh, your Audi Centre will talk you through the various optional metallic, pearl effect and Audi exclusive paint colours. Uh, on the standard model, you can add in the carbon matte aluminium styling pack, and that distinguishes the top carbon addition variant I mentioned earlier. Buyers of the standard car who don't like that, but who still want to make this Audi stand out a little more, can choose either of the two other optional styling packs in black and carbon black, and they add the chosen color to the radiator grille, the front and rear spoilers, um, the window trimming, the door sill extensions, and the rear diffuser. On the straightforward RS4 model, it's also possible to add in the carbon addition derivatives red brake calipers, um, plus that very variants, carbon finish for the door mirrors, the engine cover and the interior inlays. Talking of interior inlays, if you're going for a standard RS4 and you don't like the standard aluminium race cabin trim and you don't want to swap this for a carbon finish, there are alternative darker aluminium anthracite or piano black options. 
Once all that's sorted to your satisfaction, uh, you might want to switch your attention to a few practical touches. There is a retractable tow bar on offer, and as you'd expect, there's the option of the usual roof bars for luggage boxes, skis, snowboards and bikes. Now, we'd want the storage pack. Now, that gives you nets in the front seat backrests, an extra storage compartment below the light switch on the driver's side, um, a lockable glove box, cup holders in the rear armrest, and for the boot, uh, a luggage net, tensioning straps, nets in the corner recess areas, and a 12-volt socket. Finally, let's take a look at safety. Uh, now, like all A4 models, this one gets a collision avoidance system that Audi calls Precent City. Now, this is one of those setups that constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. If it detects one, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond, or you aren't able to, the system will automatically brake the car and it should be able to avoid a collision at speeds of under 19 miles an hour. And if you are going faster than that, the Precent City system will uh, reduce your speed to soften the impending impact. Also standard is Audi Side Assist, which on the move uh, works as a blind spot monitor and it warns you if you're dangerously about to pull out to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Uh, if you do hit something and you panic, then a standard multi-collision brake assist system will automatically take over the braking duties and that avoids the possibility of skidding and further collisions. As for more common standard safety features, uh, there's hill hold assist. That's a feature that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And you can also tick off Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, and a tire pressure loss indicator, plus twin front side and curtain airbags. In addition, as expected in this segment, there is a complete roster of electronic acronyms, uh, and that includes the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction, and stability control. Uh, there's also a rest recommendation feature, and that monitors your driving for drowsiness and alerts you, if necessary, to stop for a restorative coffee. It's always possible to go further, though. Uh, a tyre pressure monitoring display and rear side airbags are optional. And should you want further peace of mind, well, your Audi Centre salesperson will doubtless be delighted to point you towards the choicest elements of the camera-driven safety technology that's been developed for this car. Now we'll start with the Parking Assistance Pack Advanced Package that includes six key features. Uh, a cross traffic assist rear feature alerts you to oncoming cars if you're reversing out of a space. And an exit warning system monitors the rear and side of your RS4 as you get out of it, alerting you if vehicles or cyclists are approaching from behind. Plus, there are Audi Presense Basic and Presense Rear features that, in the event of an inevitable front or rear impact, optimally prepare the car to best survive it. Um, for when you're parking, a uh, 360 degree camera uses wide angle lenses to cover the close range around the vehicle. And as part of that pack, Audi also throws in its Park Assist system, there to help you seek out spaces before automatically steering you into them. The other even more significant combined safety feature option you'll be offered on this car is called the Driver Assistance Pack Tour Package. This gives you seven key extra electronic safety items and they really could make the difference between a near miss and a very bad day. So let's run through them. Um, we'll start with a system that the Ingolstadt brand calls Presense Front. Now you remember that standard Presense City setup we're just telling you about uh, that at low speeds scans the road ahead for collisions and and which can automatically brake to avoid them. Well, wouldn't it be good if that setup operated at higher speeds too? Well, with Presense Front, it does. Um, even cleverer is what we'd see as probably the most sophisticated driver assistance pack tour feature, and that is something that Audi calls adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist. Now that system is there to automatically keep your RS4 a set distance behind the car in front on the highway, and it'll warn you if you're too close to another vehicle, and it's also able to automatically stop you and then start you off again if you come across a tailback. Now the traffic jam assist bit also frees you up in slow to medium speed queues and it allows the car to automatically brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Yes, really. We haven't finished yet either. An equally clever predictive efficiency assist system works with that setup. It regulates your Audi's speed for maximum efficiency and it also offers driving tips that could create fuel savings up to 10%. 
Well, if you think that's neat, uh, then check out the fourth driver assistance pack tour feature, and that's called Turn Assist. So let's say you're uh, turning out of a junction and you haven't seen an oncoming car or bike. Uh, Turn Assist will automatically apply the brakes and prevent the accident. If only every car had that feature. Other more familiar inclusions in the pack uh, run to traffic sign recognition. Now that uh, will picture road signs as it pass them and then display them on the dash. Audi Active Lane Assist, and that's there to gently steer you back into your lane if you inadvertently drift out of it. And a so-called collision avoidance assistant that tweaks the steering to keep the car stable in an emergency maneuver. It's all very reassuring. It would have been disappointing if Audi had switched this model from V8 to bi-turbo V6 power without a substantial gain in running cost efficiency. Well, quite an improvement in that regard has been delivered here, uh, and that goes a long way towards compensating for the lack of the old engine's aural fireworks. To be specific, where the old V8-powered B8 series RS4 Avant managed 26.4 uh, mpg on the combined cycle and 249 grams per kilometre of CO2, the figures for this car are 32 0.1 mpg and 199 grams per kilometer. The only difference that fitting the larger 20-inch wheels makes to this is to push the CO2 figure fractionally up to 200 grams per kilometer. To save you crunching the numbers, uh, these figures see a 21% improvement in combined cycle fuel consumption and a 25% gain in CO2 emissions. Mind you, that CO2 figure will still see you needing to pay 450 pounds in tax just to keep this car on the road. We'll try and give you some perspective on the returns I've just quoted uh, in various different ways. Now, the next model down in the range, the 354 PS S4 Avant, manages 35.8 mpg and 179 grams per kilometre. Perhaps more pertinently, uh, we'll tell you that this RS4 model's readings are about the same as you'll get from rivals like the Mercedes-AMG C63 Estate and BMW's M3 Saloon in its competition pack guise. Of course, all this is relative. I mean, drive any car in this segment as it's designed to be driven, and you'll really struggle to see much more than about 20 miles per gallon on a regular basis. Uh, during this test, uh, on one thrashy cross-country trip, uh, we saw a low of 10 mpg. <laughs> Audi points to the fact that the lighter MLB Evo chassis has helped the RS4 model's cause, and that's true. Uh, the Mark IV model is 80 kilos lighter than its predecessor. Most of the weight saving can be attributed to the downsized engine, and that weighs 31 kilos less than the old 4.2 litre V8. Having said that, though, this car still tips the scales at 1,790 kilos. That makes it fully 230 kilos heavier than the BMW M3, but then that is a saloon. A comparable Merck C63 Estate is about the same weight as an RS4. As with Audi's impressive 2-litre TFSI engine, uh, this car's 2.9-litre TFSI power plant uses a whole range of clever technology to improve its returns. It works in what Audi calls a B-cycle to improve partial throttle load fuel returns. It has a special two-stage AVS, Audi valve lift system, and it uses clever thermal management for more efficient running at startup. Of course, this Audi's relatively impressive efficiency showing isn't solely down to reduced weight and its new engine. Other important factors include a more slippery shape and an engine stop-start system that cuts in as you coast or halt rather than waiting until you get to a complete stop. This means that in traffic the engine is off more often than it would otherwise be. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that the automatic transmission has an efficient freewheeling mode that cuts in when you come off the accelerator and cruise at speeds between 35 and 100 miles an hour. Uh, this feature disengages the engine for greater efficiency and then re-engages it immediately and almost seamlessly when you either accelerate or brake. Going further than this, it requires use of the optional predictive efficiency assist setup. Now, Audi says that this could potentially improve your fuel economy by as much as 10%. Um, it works with the navigation data and the adaptive cruise control system. Now, that comes as part of the extra cost driving assistance pack tour package. How? Well, by analysing any given route once set to decide how the journey could be undertaken more efficiently.
In doing this, the speed limits, the traffic signs, the bends and roundabouts that you'll be encountering along the way are all taken into account. And the setup then offers driving tips which will help you to achieve better running cost returns. Um, well, let's say, for example, that a junction is just out of your sight around the next bend and you could take your foot off the throttle just a little earlier. Get out onto the motorway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, predictive efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. Um, if it knows that you're going to be traveling for a few junctions, then it will engage that freewheeling mode that we just mentioned at cruising speeds for greater efficiency. What else? Um, what about maintenance? Well, service intervals will vary between 9 and 19,000 miles, depending on how hard you drive the car. Uh, somewhere in that span, the need for an impending garage visit will flash up in the instrument binnacle. In fact, this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance this feature can at the appropriate time send a service request direct to your local dealer alternatively you can sign up for Audi service request which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer so as your RS4 nears the time when work will be needed uh, the diagnostics will alert your nominated local Audi center who will then contact you to book in a convenient time Maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase. Another neat service your uh, dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Now here, technicians who are carrying out workshop inspections on your RS4 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems and accompany the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or to your smartphone. Now that way you'll know precisely what work you're authorizing on your car. On to the warranty. Now, uh, all contenders in this class get three years of cover, but whereas you won't get your mileage limited in this period if you opt for something made by either BMW or Mercedes, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four years and 75,000 miles or five years and 90,000 miles. Uh, if the worst happens and the car breaks down, there's free roadside assistance included for the first 36 months of ownership. What else? Um, well, predictably, the first year road tax fee will make you wince. Because this car retails at over £40,000, it'll cost £450 a year just to keep this Audi legally on the road. Insurance is rated at uh, Group 45E, and that's quite a big jump over the S4 event, which is rated at 30E. Still, at least residual values are predicted to be satisfyingly strong. Experts Cat Monitor reckon that after three years and 60,000 miles, your RS4 should still be worth 43.3% of your original purchase price, which is, uh, well, nearly 6% better than a comparable Mercedes-AMG C63 estate. Experts Cat Monitor reckon that after three years and 60,000 miles, your RS4 should still be worth 43.3% of its original purchase price, which is nearly 6% better than a comparable Mercedes-AMG C63 estate. Now that is provided, of course, that you haven't loaded up this Audi with too many pricey options. Overall, we're talking class-leading levels of low depreciation here, though. It's the same with pence per mile running costs, which according to CAP are set with this car at 74 pence per mile. A Mercedes AMG C63 Estate is rated at uh, 82.9 pence per mile, while a BMW M3 Competition Pack Auto is rated at 80.3 pence per mile. So again then, the Audi is out in front. Never mind the R8 supercar or the TT Coupe, if you want to understand just how brilliant Audi can be in building a sporting car, the RS4 has long been the best barometer. Is it still though in this fourth generation B9 series, guys? Well, in some ways, yes. Like many, we miss the previous model's high revving 4.2 litre V8, but there is little doubt that the replacement V6 Porsche power plant, although it's less hourly emotive, has more real world punch. That seems appropriate in such a resolutely real world performance car. Is it perfect? 
No, of course it isn't. Uh, the steering lacks a little feedback and the DRC adaptive damping system that you need to dial out the standard model's rather over-firm ride shouldn't have to cost you extra. Other than that, uh, providing you can afford the premium asking price, this Audi is virtually flawless, which is impressive as it really doesn't have to be. After all, what other high-performance four-wheel drive mid-sized estate car is there to challenge this one? The closest thing the market has to offer, the rear-driven Mercedes-AMG C63 wagon wouldn't give you the all-round grip, and it really needs a dry racetrack and a license to burn rubber if it's to appeal over an RS4. As for a high-performance SUV, well, forget it. You'd be all over the place just trying to keep this Audi in sight. Perhaps this modern era V6 RS4 needed to be this good to deter more rivals from making a challenge. Who knows? What's beyond debate though is that if you love fast cars and you need something with more than a little practicality and year-round capability, then this Audi remains the default choice if funds permit. Drive it and you'll experience a slightly guilty thrill as if something this much fun really couldn't be legal. One day, cars like this might well be legislated out of existence. In the meantime, enjoy this one while you can. <laughs>